feels great, man. It's great to be back. Um, back out there, obviously, with the team and everybody, and just being able to play football again. You know, the game I love, being able to go out there and play with my teammates and get back on the field. It's a, it's a great feeling, especially after that journey. You know, they say you're angry after you get hurt, and you're angry after you get hurt because of all the work you put into it. I mean, how long did that last for you last year, considering the camp you had, the impact of the opener and everything? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely that little uh, little timeline right after you get hurt. You know, you got to give yourself some time to be angry, give yourself to f some time to feel bad about yourself. It's part of the part of the whole journey, and um, I don't know exactly how long that that took to get over, but it was a little bit. You know, felt bad about myself probably till I got surgery, and then when I got surgery, it was it was time to grind from there. So um, it's been a journey, and and that's just the the beginning of it. What do you remember about the actual injury? What 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 happened? Uh, it was just late in the game and um, got rolled up on. And you get rolled up on a thousand times in this game, and I've been rolled up on a thousand times in my career. And um, sometimes it just happens that way. It's part of the game, and you can't be angry or blame anyone. And it's just part of the game. You said I think Dave Bakhtiari told us that you know when he talked to Doc and gave the news, he screamed. And previous to that, he told him. Better not have a diagnosis that starts with A. So clearly, he must not have known what he did. Did you know, though, like when he did it, that it was A? I just think I just tore my ACL. I think deep down, I did know, yeah. I think I didn't want to believe it for sure. Um, there's that time where you're just kind of confused. You know, I never felt what I felt out there. Um, so there was that little bit of confusion of what really happened. And um, But the team does a great job of, you know, not telling you on the field and freaking out out there. and. Um, but yeah, obviously, I was shocked and didn't want to believe it. And um, a lot of emotions rushing through your head is kind of just the whole night's just kind of a of a blur. But you know, you try not to remember those times and just just remember the good times that you had. Just had you ever missed a game before before that? Uh, ever? Ever? Yeah. Uh, I think I missed a few games throughout college. Um, the earlier part of my career, like freshman sophomore year, I missed a few games. Um, but no, not the the last two years. I was pretty healthy, and then um, I I kind of say like big stages in my career. I haven't missed a game, so that was definitely the um, the biggest injury that I've I've had the most time I've missed. From a mental perspective, just what was that like then the rest of the year? Obviously, you're doing the rehab, but mm -hmm. still trying to be a rookie, understand what the system is to, yeah. to be able to spend that time when you get back. Yeah, I think uh, the mental side of rehab is uh, downplayed a lot. You know, obviously you're grinding every day and every day physically trying to get your knee right, but the mental mental side of um, being hurt, not being able to play the game, not being around the team as much, um, it takes a toll on you for sure. Um, but we have great resources here. I got great friends, family, support system um, that supported me all along the way. And just knowing that I got them behind me, you know, I'm here for a reason. God put me here for a reason. Um, so you have some peace through that. Um, but yeah, the mental side of it is huge. And then also trying to stay in the playbook as much as I could. Probably did that more towards the end of the career, when end of the season. Sorry, um, when I started feeling a little bit better, being able to walk a little bit more, um, just trying to get back into it. Have you, have you and Dave been able to become kind of close going through this together? How, how has it been beneficial to have someone to kind of go through it with? Yeah, I mean Dave's been awesome. Um, obviously crushed when when he, I heard the news about him. I think I was about two months um, into my. Um, recovery when when his happened so I knew what he was going through um, so I just you know told him I was there for him and um, throughout the process it's been great getting to know him and um, we've always spent obviously spent a little more time together than we normally would if you know if we were playing and healthy so it's been awesome to get to know Dave we've been um, pushing each other he pushes me uh, makes a lot of jokes in the training room keeps it lighthearted in there so Dave's been great to me um, and he's been pushing me and I've tried to push him as well and um, we just try to you know get better together What's, what's the past week been like for you? I've never gone through a torn ACL, but when you, like that first practice, are you thinking about it at all, or are you ready to cut out loose? I guess, how, can you take me through mentally that part of it? Yeah, I think uh, the mental side of it coming back is definitely there a little bit, but when you start practicing, um, I kind of overcame all those mental hurdles, so that's why I felt like I was ready to get out there, and the, and the training staff felt like I was ready to get out there. There's mental hurdles, like I stated, throughout the whole process. Um, and trusting your knee and remembering what happened and just getting back on the field and um, not thinking about it is a big, big step in the process. So um, getting out there and practice, I'm not thinking about it at all. Um, I feel feel like I used to feel, and um, I'm just happy to be back out there. So, so even that first drop, you were 
just doing, you're just playing, you're just a football player again, that wasn't even a little bit back there? Just playing the game, okay. just playing the game. I know, playing the game I know and love. In what way has your perspective changed after having to sit out so long, not having to be Yeah, perspective is huge, man. It's uh, not being able to play this game is, is tough. I've never went through something like this before. Um, where I've went through such a long period of, um, especially with you know such a big injury, the biggest injury, one of the biggest injuries in the sport. Um, so perspective is huge. Obviously, um, just your appreciation for the game, um, everything that you go through to get to a certain point, and then you feel like all that's taken away. Your appreciation, like even today's like fourth fourth practice in the row in a row. You know, maybe back in the day when I've never had an injury, I might. You know, ah, we got another practice, but now I'm excited to be back out there every single day. And um, I know God's placed me here for a reason, so just appreciating the place I'm in and playing for the Green Bay Packers, man, it's it's an unbelievable experience, and I'm just, you know, trying to take advantage of every opportunity. You didn't you talk go about on that. family night, right? Like, you, you didn't practice No, that. I didn't go on family night. Because of the, the left field, or was that the plan all along? Um, it, it was the plan all along. Um, the training staff and upstairs has been great. Um, Jo, my coach, and the whole tight end room—we've all we've all had great communication about um, setting certain dates and um, just taking it day by day. You know, because today I could feel great, um, tomorrow could be an iffy day. That's part of the rehab process. Um, so setting that timeline, but also being smart about it and not putting this is when I'm going to be back. You know, so the team's been great about that. The staff and everybody has been real supportive. Um, I'm going to sit down with the team and we're going to decide, uh, sit down with Flea and Nate and decide what's best for me. How's that been having uh, Mercedes and, and Bob and Connie in, in the room, especially coming back off an injury like that? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, Mercedes and Bobby are great mentors for me. They're both um, obviously had great seasons last year and it was, it was awesome to watch. And just being a part of that room and being a younger guy in that room, I just try to be a sponge and get better every day. And, um, obviously, we have a great coach in J.O., so bouncing ideas off him and Bobby and Mercedes, it's, it's like having three coaches in there. So just being able to learn from them, watch them, and, and get better every day. And anything they have to say to me, I'm, I'm, uh, my ears are wide open. You talk about the mental hurdles. Just who are some of the people who helped you out the most just getting through the mental side of it? Yeah, there's been a lot. Um, I've had, like I stated, I've had, I have a huge support system. Um, my parents, my my little sister, friends, family, um, Dr. Carr in the facility, they've all been great mentally. Um, my faith in God has been a huge, huge part of this journey. Um, just knowing I'm here for, for a bigger purpose and knowing that everything happens for a reason. Um, it's been a huge part of my journey and I've, I'm so blessed with a great support system and um, that's been huge, like you said, from the mental side, just overcoming every single obstacle. Josiah, you know, Matt found some creative ways to use you last year. Uh, even in the downtime, uh, you kind of come up with any creative suggestions of your own that you might want to pass <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't think I'm at that at that stage yet. Just listen to whatever he has for me and, and do whatever he says. Josiah, speaking of that, um, so you know, your faith and your support system gets you through. The, I get that. Mm -hmm. But even guys that have strong faith still go through tough times. Did it help? To know, like we could see how excited Matt was to put you to use. Mm -hmm. We could see all the ideas he had for using you. Did those help you get through, knowing that you you were still going to have a big part when you got healthy, or did that make it tougher because you're like, well, I could have had a really big role in this team this year. Yeah, um, I think for me, it's really just taking it day by day. It's hard to look so far ahead and look at big things like that, right? Um, it's really it's a long process. It's you know nine, ten, eleven months. So if you're looking, you know I can't wait till I'm back. It's like it's gonna feel forever. But if you take it day by day, you know getting this much stronger this day, being able to walk, being able to run, being able to go full speed, like those little goals that you set for yourself, that's what really gets you through it. So I wouldn't say I was looking that far ahead. Now that as you a, are as a kid in Folsom, growing up, mm -hmm. when did you first start playing football? Were you always a receiver? Was there something there in high school or at Cincy that, because you've got extraordinary ball skills? Uh -huh. Yeah, growing up, I played a lot of positions. I mean, I started out at center. I mean, if that counts when I was in, what, third grade. Um, but then I played a little bit of tight end growing up, a little bit. I played quarterback for like four or five years. And then going into high school, playing receiver, and then towards the end of my high school career, knew I was going to 
switch to tight end. So um, I guess that's where my ball skills come in. But have always tried to be a well-rounded player and do everything well. Is there a coach or driller or something that put you over the top? Something consistently. I want, I, I, oh, you, sorry, say that again? Was there a coach or a drill you did yourself that kind of put it over the top for you? I've had tremendous coaches throughout my whole career. You know, back to high school with uh, uh, my, I had two co-coaches that were amazing, um, great coaches at Cincinnati and um, great coaches here. So I, I wouldn't say it's one specific person, but just um, a huge support system and great coaches I've had along the way. Now that you are back and you've had a few days on the field, is there any any rust? Is there any, any, even mentally, kind of mental hurdles to get over to trust that knee again? How, how's, what's that process like? Yeah, I think the first day just getting out there, it's just getting back into the flow of the game. Um, not from a mental state of like I'm worrying about my leg, but more just hearing the call, getting to the line, seeing the defense, you know, doing what you have to do to execute the play. I think that's a big thing, getting back into that, because it's different than, you know, reading the, reading the script and knowing what you got. It's, it's a big difference. So I think. That's a little bit the first day, getting back into that. Um, and also just being able to get out there and hit somebody. And that first hit is always one to feel good to get out of the way. So now that um, I did that, I'm just ready to go. Coach LaFleur always talks about you as a really smart player. So did playing all those different positions when you were a kid, is that kind of how where the football IQ came from? Or were there other things that you've done along the way to, you know, to develop those football smarts? I think a little bit. I think I've always tried to been I think I've always tried to be a student of the game. So wherever I was, whether in high school, college, trying to do that extra work to know not only what I got, but just learn the game of football. So I've always tried to be like that, and I'm still obviously learning a lot right now. So we had about a week before the Vikings game, you came in and saw the game plan, and then were you a little bit surprised that they were going to use you in all these different manners? Had you gotten a taste of that, uh, that that could be the case in, in week one? Uh, that was a uh, that was a while ago, but I just you know any game plan that's thrown at me, I think I'm able to adjust to it and, and whatever whatever the team wants to do and however they want to use me, you know I'm ready to do whatever they need and do whatever it takes to make the team better. One more. How would you describe the versatility in the tight end room? Dom just said, or Dominic Gaffney just said that Justin Clark, you guys have a bunch of misfits, <laughs> um, and you know I think he referred to you guys as Swiss Army knife. So how would you describe it? Yeah, I think that's perfect. I mean, I think we have – you couldn't have a, a more variety of players in the in the tight end room. There's obviously Mercedes and then Bobby and then me, Daff, you know, all the way down. Um, so we, we make each other better in there. I think um, seeing how different players do different things and how different people do things well and you do things well, you're able to feed off each other. And I think that's what makes our room special and we have a great time in there and we just try to get better every day.